Okay, so let's see how to do this. Uh, one thing we have learned is that we are able to deal with new variables. Okay, we evaluate reduced cost to see if we need to run some simplex iterations. So that's good. We somehow have a difficulty about dealing with a new constraint. Uh, because in our previous example, you can see that here comes a negative number, right? And it's not like a negative reduced cost. If we have a negative reduced cost, it's still a valid simplex iteration. Just enter it, do some pivoting, that's fine. But when we have an invalid basic feasible solution, that's, that's tough. So we somehow need to use some more tools to deal with that. And the tool here is duality. Okay, let's see these specific applications of duality. We know that a primal constraint is a dual variable, right? This is one of the most important idea here we need to use. We don't really need to know how to deal with the new constraint, but that primal new constraint is actually a dual new variable, right? So we are going to deal with the dual linear program instead of the primal. Let's see how to do this. So our previous uh, original primal linear program is this one, right? So we are able to write down its dual. Uh, so I don't think it's too difficult, but let's just do a very brief review. Four, six goes to the objective values, uh, functions. Two and three goes to your right-hand side. You have x variables, they become y variables. You have two y variables because here you have two primal constraints. You have two dual constraints because you have two primal variables. And you can see that for constraint coefficients, this is one, 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 two. This is here, you actually should have a transpose, which happens also to be one, 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 two. And then uh, we can see that here, we have non-negative variables because in our maximization primal, constraints are less than or equal to. And lastly, we have greater than or equal to constraints in our dual because in our maximization problem, uh, the x variables are non-negative. Okay, so here is a typo, it should be minimum. Okay, so this is our dual linear program. Writing down it uh, is standard and there shouldn't be uh, too, too many problems. So we are able to do this. And what does that tell us? If our primal linear program now has a new constraint like this, we know when it is converted to dual, it's going to have a new variable. So your y3 corresponds to your third primal constraint. y3 again should be non-negative. And for y3, you have one here, zero here, one, zero, one here, zero here. And your right-hand side value becomes its objective coefficient. So this is how we get our dual linear program for our new problem. We can indeed see that we have a new variable. And what's even better is that the optimal solution for our primal is going to be the optimal solution of our dual. Solving the dual is the same as solving the primal. So if our primal has a new constraint and we don't know how to deal with it, let's just take a look at the dual. The dual has a new variable, and then we have the way we just learned to deal with this new variable, right? We calculate its reduced cost, we do this, do that, a few pivoting, a few iterations, and then get to an optimal solution. Then we use complementary slackness or whatever to get back to our primal optimal solution. This is how we may use duality to tackle this problem. We have a new primal constraint, no idea, that's fine, let's solve the dual. We may solve the new dual to solve the new primal linear program. So all together, that's a way to use the dual, uh, the duality theorem. What's interesting is that while we understand this idea, actually people in this uh, field, they do not really work on the dual LP directly. Instead, they invented the so-called dual simplex method, which also requires us to do some pivoting, do some ratio test or whatever thing. But it's just 
kept uh, copying those uh, ideas of simplex method, but we don't need to work on the dual program. So let's see how this works. Uh, we have our primal simplex method, right? The method we learned in the past. If we are having a maximization problem, what we do is to look for negative reduced cost. Okay, at the top rule, we look for negative numbers and uh, negative numbers. Okay, and once we have that, we're going to do a ratio test to take a look at this entering column and the right hand side. These are numerators and these are denominators. Okay, we do the ratio test to find a right hand side value that will become zero as the first one. That would be our living variable because we cannot violate primal feasibility. So the primal simplex method is actually maintaining primal feasibility. And we say it's fixing dual infeasibility. What does that mean? If you have some memory about complementary slackness, you know when you have a primal solution and it is not optimal, it must be because the corresponding dual solution is infeasible. Now, somehow we can say that. Or say it in another way. If you have a reduced cost uh, that is negative, that somehow tells you that you may keep improving. And that somehow tells you that your dual solution is the corresponding dual solution is invisible at that moment. Okay? So basically we are maintaining primal feasibility. And we know there are some dual variables that are still, um, for example, negative in this example. They are still infeasible. There are still some primal uh, dual constraints that are not satisfied. So we're going to do all the fixing things. So the thing that we do when we are running dual simplex method is that we're going to take a look at no, uh, we're going to no longer look at the reduced costs. What we do is that we're going to look at a negative number at the right hand side. And this is the problem to fix, right? And once we get this row, we are going to see whether we have any way to find an entering variable. This guy uh, with the negative right hand side, it should be a living variable. It should leave the basis. So we want to now find a entering variable. And we do also ratio test. There are some numbers at the zeros row. They are numerators. There are some numbers at the leaving row. They should be denominators. We're going to do the ratio test to find a reduced cost hitting zero first. And that's going to be our entering variable. We will maintain dual feasibility in any iteration and the fixed primal infeasibility, fix the negative right-hand side values. So that's the idea. So later we will see some examples for sure, but the key here is to, uh, to, to see how the primal simplex method and the dual simplex method are mirrors for each other, okay? For primal, you look at the top and then do ratio test among two columns. For the dual, you look at the right hand side and then do ratio test among two rows and uh, between two rows. Okay, so let's see some examples.